This is Z. What's the secret to making paintings like that? Welcome folks, it's me, Aaron the Artist. Zed is an influential freelance artist best known for his gorgeous and highly detailed character art. But you know, what I find most interesting about Zed is that most of his paintings aren't nearly as detailed or as polished as you might first think. There's a classic kind of magic trick going on in Zed's work that gives you the illusion of detail when really there's not that much there. But the images are always so mesmerizing to me. I like my fantasy elf girls, okay? Don't look at me like that. I can hear you judging. I'm going to be uncovering what makes this style of art work, and creating an illustration trying to use what I've learned from studying Z. Every great master painting has a focal point. When you create a painting, you don't want people to just look at it any way that they want. What you want is you want to control people and force them to look at it your way. What you want is to direct their eye and their attention to the main idea of your painting. That's what's called the focal point. The focal point of any really great painting is usually the first thing that hits you when you look at it. Now when you look at Zed's work, it's the faces that you look at. You look at the rest of the work too, but only kind of accidentally. What really demands all of your attention are the faces. What he's doing there is laying out the piece in such a way that you immediately get drawn to the face and away from everything else. Because of how much time you spend looking at the face, and how little attention you pay to the other things, he can get away with making those faces absolutely perfect, and then painting everything else kind of... more sloppy. Please don't kill me Zed, I'm so sorry for calling your work sloppy. Lower resolution. Lower resolution is what I meant. In Zed's work, when you see the face first, your brain expects the rest of the image to be just as high quality as the face, and even though it isn't, your brain fills in all of those details. This technique was very common with the old master painters. Take a look at this painting by John Singer Sargent. Where do you end up looking? I bet nobody ends up looking at this ribbon down here. And I bet nobody noticed at first glance that the ribbon is just a heap of random brushstrokes. God damn it. Even this man's random brushstrokes are pretty. So much jealousy. So much jealousy. Okay, well how does this compare with what Zed is doing? It's almost an identical technique, and the more pieces that you look at, the more obvious it becomes. Both artists are obviously masters at portrait painting, and they're forcing you to look at that aspect of their work. Unfortunately, it's not as simple as just drawing really detailed faces and then putting scribbles everywhere else. Believe me, I tried that. To paint like Zed, we have to find ways of leading the eye to the face and holding attention there. It's time we took a look at contrast. Contrast makes people pay attention, and that's how Zed sets up his focal points. There are at least six different types of contrast that Zed uses in his work to pull us in. One, the most obvious one, careful versus sloppy. I mean, low resolution. Zed paints his portraits very meticulously, with every tone and every line in exactly the right place to create an almost perfect face. But when it comes to the other aspects of the painting, you see that the lines are more chaotic and the tones are less thoughtful. It's more of a rough sketch of the rest of the painting. This is that element that we spoke about that makes Zed's work look so much like Singer Sargent. 2. Colour Contrast In a lot of pieces, you see the face framed very appealingly by high saturation colours that contrast with the skin tone. A lot of times, we see bold reds and oranges that contrast nicely with the overall cooler mood of the rest of the piece. Occasionally, you see a random colour that just doesn't seem like it belongs, like a pink or a purple. 3. Strong occlusion shadows around the face. Right underneath the chin and jaw is a place that naturally appears darker anyway. But in Zed's work, you get these particularly strong occlusion shadows along the jawline, which help make the face stand out. There are a few places where we don't see that strong occlusion shadow, but in those works, we see a really highly saturated colour in that space instead. 4. 
strung hard highlights. These might be really harsh white specular highlights. Titanium white, titanium white, and some white. Or they just might be pretty colored glints in the eyes. But every time, the strongest highlights in the image will always be on the character's face. Many aspects of Zed's paintings appear to be quite washed out, like a lot of contemporary semi-realist artists are. Things always seem a little bit washed out and kind of low key, but these highlights allow the face to really pop off the page, especially the ones on the end of the nose and in the eyes. Five, dark eyelashes. I know it's really obvious that people have dark eyelashes, but when you look at Zed's paintings, just how dark and bold they are is especially exaggerated. Most aspects of the skin and the face are painted with these very soft, mushy brushes that make everything sort of meld together nicely. But when Zed draws eyelashes, oh my god, it seems like they are drawn with the hardest, most unforgiving brush that Zed could find in any brush pack. Six, saturated eyes. I mean, just look at some of these eyes and tell me that that's not attention grabbing. These are all the different ways that Zed's able to draw attention to the face in his work. But what about the rest of the piece? How does Zed manage to convince us that everything else is just as detailed, even when it isn't? Have a look again at these Singer Sargent pieces. In them, there's detail, but not really. It's all implied detail. It's all very scribbly, but it's enough to get your imagination working, and at a glance, you can't tell the difference between this and a highly rendered image. With Sargent, it's all about the color, getting the right colors in the right places, and then the image just sort of reads, almost like magic. Even when it's messy and not very detailed, the right colors in the right places, and the viewer will fill in all the rest. Having that nice contrast between areas of high detail and areas of low detail, areas of order and areas of chaos, also stops the viewer from feeling overstimulated by having too much detail to look at all at once. I hate when there's too much stuff to look at. My brain can't cope. With Zed, a lot of this is the same. A lot of scribbly detail, a lot of right colors in the right places. Sometimes the painting is even loose enough with Zed that he leaves the sketch lines in place just to hold everything together. But Zed also adds something to his paintings that Sargent never did. Symbolism. In many pieces, Zed has these graphic representations of things. Instead of drawing something in high detail like he does with the face, or using the scribbly detail like Sargent does, Zed sometimes uses a graphic symbol to represent what he wants to show. It might be leaves, other plant life, tails, creatures, sometimes even aspects of the character design itself. Instead of painting the actual object, he puts a symbol of that object. And those symbols then stand in a massive contrast to the more highly rendered aspects of his piece and make those aspects look even better. I guess that's another element of contrast that I missed when I did the six aspects of contrast. Oops. Alright, anyway, here's the outcome of all my efforts. I tried to incorporate a lot of the techniques that I went over in this video. You let me know how successful I was. I think I probably got a little too obsessed with rendering as usual. There's obviously a lot more to Zed's art than I've covered here, but these are just the things that I found inspiring. And maybe you'll find them inspiring too. Until next time folks, have a nice day or good night.
or whatever time it is. Bye.